Hello everyone. Welcome to today's talk on the topic of contributing to automotive software as part of Google Summer of Code. I am Sankhav Oran Ghosh and along with my co-speaker Anmol, we are going to present this topic. My Google Summer of Code project dealt with integrating the MetaRoss layer with automotive grid Linux to support robot operating system. A little bit about me. I am an electronics and communication engineering undergraduate student at Thapa Institute of Engineering and Technology, Patiala. I am currently in my final year. My interest varies a lot from robotics to embedded system and autonomous vehicles. I have been associated with automotive grid Linux since the past two years. Uh, I was a Google Season of Docs student last year and I recently completed Google Summer of Code this year. A little bit about my GSA project, a brief about it. So the, uh, the main two tasks of my Google Summer of Code project was to integrate the Meta ROS layer with, uh, uh, with AGL to support ROS. And the second was to port uh, YD LiDAR ROS to driver uh, to to for it to be compatible with my integration and there was a third task which is currently a work in progress that was to develop a lidar visualization application i was mentored by the very supportive jan simon moller and walt minor from the linux foundation by this project I currently lead the data acquisition team at the Formula Student Team Fateh of my university. Uh, I joined this team as a SOFUMO and they really did provide me with the relevant background. For those of you who, who don't know what Formula Student is, it is an undergraduate uh, design competition, engineering design competition. Uh, the, this company Competition happen worldwide over many locations, many countries, and we are judged on making a prototype open cockpit formula styled uh, racing vehicle. Right. And for the same, we required a robust platform that could handle low latency data communication currently and concurrently be reliable enough for automotive data acquisition. Uh, we did our experimentation on the Raspberry Pi prototyping board and the ultimate goal of our team is to develop autonomous electric vehicles for the same form of student competitions. Now here are some clips that shows the fun time that we had during the wheel speed uh, sensor testing and you know we also prepared a makeshift rigged testing rig using a disk polisher as you can see here. And here I am checking out the canvas interface. I think the video will play now. Yeah. So working with Formula student team was a very hands-on experience and it you know intrigued me. And during the research, I came across Automotive grid Linux. So that was my starting point uh, of my journey towards eventually uh, getting into Google Summer of Code. Right. And so, uh, like in 20, at the, at the start of 2020, I was very peaked with Automotive grid Linux. And eventually, I started attending the weekly developer calls and talking with the mentors, talking with the contributors. And I saw this uh, opportunity of Google Season of Docs. And so I thought, let's try this, right? And so I talked with the mentor, Jan Simon, and he instructed me that the current problem that they're facing at that time was that the documentation was very hard to maintain and it was kind of a mess. And so my GSOD project was to rework the documentation, hosting and generation, right? So we generated, so the new uh, doc documentation side is being generated using MKDocs, 
I'm using Garret for storing our for repositories and you know I read the docs for hosting our site. And the main aim of the newly developed recommendation website is to be developer friendly. That was the main thing that we had in our mind. The second task was for me to restructure documentation content and rewrite the getting started in developer guides. So this experience provided me with a very hands-on and relevant background to actually contribute to EGL in a meaningful and a systematic way. And you know, this was the earlier setup documentation. So we have multiple repositories and a lot of things are going on here. Kind of complicated for a new for a newcomer to, you know, for a new contributor to get a gist of. And this was the uh, setup that I proposed uh, in my GSOD proposal. And so now this is hosted on Garrett and it has a single repository different branches for different releases of the distribution and yeah so my main job was to simplify this and to rewrite the documentation right now coming back to my google summer of code project i would like to talk a bit about the fundamental technological stacks that we use for you know building agl and how they are relevant to my project right so the first technology that I would like to talk about is the Yocto project. Yeah, right. AGL is being built using Yocto. And the Yocto project is a yeah, the, the Yocto project is a project maintained by the Linux Foundation. And it consists of the open embedded code and the Pokey reference distribution. And Pokey in it itself consists of the open embedded build system and plus metadata. And metadata, as you can see, are sets of instructions that you know define how exactly can we build an image, you know, how the build system can parse the image, and it consists of various recipes, configuration files, and instructions to build the image. Okay, now coming to the open embedded build system, right. We have, uh, you know, it consists of Bitbig and Open Embedded Core. Right now, Bitbig is the main task scheduler, execution scheduler. It is the main engine that uh, works with our recipes uh, that have to be written in a specific format, right? And they perform the set of tasks. And Open Embedded Core uh, is a common layer across all the Open Embedded derived systems, including the Yocto project, and it consists of uh, metadata like recipe classes and associated files and these are meant to be common across different open embedded systems yeah so the particular uh, use of using yocto is that you know uh, packages are grouped into layers and recipes are part of layer right so there is a great deal of modularity with this project and so these layers are nothing but you know individual pieces of software and uh, layer are different kind of repository or folder and multiple recipes can be presented within each layer so you know uh, so the modularity helps and you know we can just plug and play and uh, you know, with a little debugging we can get different packages installed from the uh, installed in the operating system from the get on right and these, so there are different components of the Yocto project. You know, we have four type of files that we have to edit and play around with to get our relevant features in the operating system. So the first one is the configuration files. You know, it defines the global definition variable and, you know, the type of machine that we want, the global variables, the, you know, uh, across the build system, the build paths, the compiler flags. And then we have the DB class, the classes file. And it is basically an encapsulation and inheritance of the build logic, right? How can we build a Linux kernel, you know, generating the RPM packages and whatever packages that we need, and how to create the root of this or the image. Next, we have the recipes, also the BB files. And these are the logical unit of the software, you know, the images to be built, the individual pieces of software to be built. And so they consist of the what packages would be included in the final system image, right? And then 
largest uh, layers, the DB layers, and these just contain the rel related metadata, and these are just you know sets of recipes. So yeah, so these are just a long list of this. Uh, we call the ones we can just uh, have for our liking. Okay. Now coming to automotive grid Linux, how does it connect with the uh, Dr. Bhumnarayan? Right. So automotive grid Linux is an open source operating system. Right. This project is being hosted at the Linux Foundation, and it is a framework for automotive application, uh, which is being developed using the Yocto project. Right. So it's a framework for automotive applications, and uh, so it provides seventy to eighty percent of the starting point for a car manufacturer to be involved to actually make their own flavor of operating system. Right. Yeah. And so the benefits of using Yocto are many. Right. So we can develop using common Linux operating system for all major architecture and boards. So it's a really you know convenient for the developer as you can build across major architectures and boards. And a flexible and a modular framework allows for reusing of software. Right. So there are number of n number of collection of layers and recipes. Right. As I mentioned that. You know, across major or uh, across different boards. So changing the hardware platform is also very easy due to the presence of board support packages. And these board support packages are being provided by the manufacturer of the boards. So the developer has to, you know, just add the layers and just get it working. So it's a very convenient way. Now coming to the meta loss layer. Yeah. So the ROS development team added the support for the meta ROS layer for it to be relevant to the Yocto project. Yeah. So the meta ROS layer consists of over 400 recipes for different packages. Uh, these packages are dependent on the open embedded layers, right? And this is the link where you can go and check out the meta ROS package. And the meta ROS layer was split into multiple different layers, right? Uh, you know, they they consisted of ROS one and ROS two distributions, and these were the three main layers uh, which the meta ROS layer consisted of. And the meta ROS common dealt with the common recipes for both ROS and ROS two. The meta ROS uh, layer dealt with uh, recipes regarding the melodic and the neutral distributor. So these are the ROS one distributions. The meta ROS2 layer dealt with the recipes for ROS2 distribution like dashing, elephant, fox, and galactic. Right. So my objective was to integrate the meta ROS2 foxy layer into the automotive grid Linux layers, AJ layers. So talking about the meta ROS2 foxy, it was a long-term support release released on 5 June 2020. Right. There was a new year. There was a latest release of the Galactic, but its end of life was earlier than Foxy, so we chose to go with Foxy. Right, right. And we needed something to test out our integration. Like, is it even working? So we used lidar, and I think everyone knows that lidar is one of the fundamental technologies that is being used by the you know, autonomous vehicles and the whole robotics industry. And it is basically a technique to use a laser and triangle uh, and use time of flight based concept to for distance measurement and triangulation based measurement and yeah so we can you know uh, generally get an output of point cloud bearing range and distance specific information okay so the lidar which i received from you know the linux foundation i mean they were very helpful uh, with me of uh, and they provided me with this YD LiDAR Expo, which is a low cost to LiDAR, and which is a great, uh, which is a great gadget gizmo to get actually started with the development. Uh, yeah, it really provides you with the hands on experience that you need, and it was really interesting. Yeah, right. And so basically, X4 is a triangular principally, uh, principle based LiDAR. It has a rotating platform that carries laser emitter and receiver lenses. And yeah, so the the output from the wider radar are very suitable to build maps, do slam, 
simultaneous localization and mapping and build 3D models and very relevant with respect to low cost robotic prototype. So yeah, so this Wadi Lida X4, I received that and this is my uh, bit jumbled setup with many wires and I have the Raspberry Pi here. And it was a very interesting thing. So this was one of the things that I do did when the, I received the LiDAR, I tested out the ROS drivers, the normal ROS driver in the Ubuntu system. And yeah, so I was getting the map of the room in which I was setting it. And this is a 2D map as you can see, right? So the second objective was to port this YD LiDAR and be it compatible with the TGL and MetaRos integration, right? So that we can check uh, if even if the integration is working or not, right? So now I'll talk about what exactly happened in the project and, you know, here is my timeline. Right. So, yeah. So, you know, in week one and zero, I received the LiDAR and, you know, I worked on, you know, in norm on normal operating system like Ubuntu and, you know, Raspbian, which is the default operating system for Raspberry Pi right? and worked on using them. First, I worked on, you, you know, you uh, getting why did LiDAR started with ROS and then I moved on to ROS 2, right? And yeah, so that was just me getting my hands uh, hands uh, dirty with the YD LiDAR ecosystem and the ROS ecosystem, right? So eventually in week two, you know, uh, I built, I built, uh, I was success, um, I was successful in building and running the Meta ROS layer with the AGL image minimal, right? So this is just the uh, minimal image of the AGL distribution and yeah. So I was successful in building it for both Jumu and Raspberry Pi. So yeah, that was a big win, you know, in week two itself, right? So eventually I tried, why not let's, you know, go full fledged in week three and just get this over with and, you know, build it on Agile demo platform. But no, that didn't work, right? I tried it on the Raspberry Pi, using Raspberry Pi board support package and that didn't work, right? That failed. So yeah, so my mentor advised me to, first right using the agile you know western image so this is uh you know this doesn't contain the app framework and everything else so this is this just contains the graphical interface and i thought and my mentor and me agreed that this is a good starting point to get started so we built the image you know the meta ross layer using that and it was a really fun time and yeah i was successful in building that yeah so eventually so now we have the we have the raw support and the Agile image western right so now the now the time was to you know add support for wadi lidar and yeah so we, i was successful in doing that too right i had to write up some codes uh, uh, some recipe and yeah yeah it was a good deal right and yeah and then i focused on you know trimming the meta loss right i removed some layers which were not seen necessary and which were just bloating out the uh, software stack so yeah so i removed some i trimmed the meta ROS layer and which you know and which, which was just a bare bone uh, meta ROS layer and it had contained uh, wide ladder support right eventually we you know we tested this on uh, this core support with wide ladder core dependencies and yeah so the next two weeks were mainly focused on that you know to getting the uh, streamlined meta ROS layer working with the driver for YD LiDAR. And I had to do some modification here and there, and we were able to do that. The last weeks focused uh, focused on packaging them and you know presenting our work, documenting them. And this led to the creation of EGL ROS to YD LiDAR feature template. And that contained, you know, Meta ROS, Agile Image Western and Wadi LiDAR support, right? And eventually we also made the package group Agile ROS to LiDAR to simplify embedding of Meta ROS and Wadi LiDAR. So now it's just a template and it consists of package group. You can just go in there and, you know, edit out some features and it is directly. And in the last week, you know, get it change requests were submitted and eventually it was accepted and it's now a part of the agile framework right 
and currently we are also planning to develop the lidar visualization application uh, with wide lidar express in mind right now here is the image of the final work product that i submitted for review and garrett and you know this is basically the meta ros to layer and it provides support for ros to minimal and wide lidar and you know after uh, multiple weeks of review and multiple changes this was finally merged in the agile gary repository and to sum it up it was a great learning experience it was a great experiential experience and i am i would like to thank my mentors jan sanan my moila and walt minor for all the support that they have provided me and it was a good summer for me and here are some of the resources and references that you can refer to get to know more about the project and to get a good idea especially you know the project page and the proposal are a good starting point if you want to learn a bit about more about this right okay and thanks for joining my talk and i would like to pass over on to anmol hello everyone so today's topic is integrating and porting of vertio block over ivisham in agile with jailhouse so this topic falls under the main topic which is contributing to uh, automotive software as a part of google summer of code so previous talk was uh, of boron's talk about uh, his contributions to the google summer of code and the automotive red linux and this talk we about will be about uh, my contributions to this for the same okay so uh, about me so i am a final year uh, engineering undergraduate student and in information technology and my interests are um, low level programming operating systems and linux kernel and i was a google summer of code uh, 2021 student at uh, the linux foundation and <clears throat> under the automotive grade linux okay so my gsoc project was uh, based on the vertio block over ivisham in the agile with jailhouse right and my mentors were uh, mr yan simon miller from the linux foundation and professor marco solidelli from university of modena and reggio emilia right okay so why this project so the main motivation for picking up this project is uh, that i was searching for a project uh, similar to the jailhouse and its extensions and i found a project listing on the gsoc page of the linux foundation and found that this projects align very best with my interest because at that time i was uh, also working at the uh, similar kind of project at uh, university of modern and regio emilia so that was the main motivation for uh, getting started with this particular project okay initial plans and extensions so initially uh, we have uh, listed down some plans to be worked on in the coming months and these are the some gist of those uh, uh, plans and so uh, i will discuss it one by one so at first we decided to pick the kernel tree which has all the patches required for the jailhouse enablings and the vertio patches so jailhouse enabling enabling uh kernel is the kernel which has uh, patches required for uh, running the jailhouse properly and uh, uh, vertio applications and so we decided to first work on that part and then we decided to configure configuration of the uh, root cell and guest cell files because uh, that was the uh, crucial part for the whole uh, implementation and integration part next was the improvement of the jailhouse as jailhouse support was recently added so improvement is very necessary for it and uh, next was uh, improve the jailhouse uh, root cell and non root cell configurations for the uh, cumulation with it because at end we need um, target image to be cumulated and so that we can um, 
test our setup and communication protocols with the help of this particular target image and cumulated image. And then um, the support for the Vertio, that is the main part, which is the configuring and add its add support for the Vertio over IVSM in the root cell and the guest cell part so that communication can be established. And uh, finally, uh, we planned to document everything uh, from changes made to how to reproduce the whole setup so that anyone who is uh, new to this particular thing can easily reproduce that particular setup and also customize it uh, according to um, their needs. Okay, the automotive grid Linux. So as Boron already uh, discussed that what is automotive grid Linux, as you already know, this is the uh, yeah, automotive Linux summit. And so this is basically an operating system, open source operating system, which uh, is used in a variety of vehicles for their core OS and uh, managing their uh, functionalities. And this particular uh, operating system is developed using the Yocto project, Yocto slash open embedded project, because some parts are there in the Yocto for the open embedded part. So yeah. And benefits of using uh, Yocto are because it's available for the all major Linux OS and all major architectures and very flexible and it's very uh, intuitive to use Yocto project uh, in comparison to other build tools available in the market. Okay, so the next part is Jailhouse. So Jailhouse, uh, as the main, we can say the base of this full project because Jailhouse is a hypervisor which is um, developed by a Siemens and it's a static partitioning hypervisor that is which can, uh, uh, I will explain more about static partitioning later. So for now, uh, it can run bare metal binaries and real time or safety critical task on AMP systems and it's copied closely with Linux because uh, if you have already read about jailhouse or know about jailhouse or new to jailhouse, let me explain. Um, it basically is a static partitioning hypervisor which loads itself on top of, on beneath the uh, Linux and uh, it works uh, in between. That is uh, first comes uh, Linux, then jailhouse after loading and then beneath the jailhouse hypervisor there is a uh, hardware part or resources which uh, needs to be allocated. And uh, next point is uh, split existing hardware resources into isolated cell compartment called, isolated compartments called cells. So it basically isolates all the uh, cells and uh, cells basically here is virtual machine, right? So at first it has, uh, it uh, loads itself into the Linux and then after when we load, try to load the uh, guest cells or well, guest virtual machines, it will uh, separate some resources or allocate some resources to that particular guest cells. And then from there, it again run isolately from uh, the root cell Linux, right? Uh, it provides bare metal like performance and latency. That's the reason why uh, AGL also shifted to uh, shifting to this uh, hypervisor because of its uh, performance and latencies for that. The, for the hardware assisted virtualization and uh, other cell borrow CPUs and de devices from the root cell as they are uh, created. So this I already discussed, it uh, borrows CPUs and devices from the root cell as they created uh, accordingly, right? You can find more about the jailhouse uh, in that link because uh, it's available, it's open source. Yeah, whatever I explained is uh, explained in this picture because first Linux, then CPU one, CPU two, then jailhouse hypervisor loaded. And after that, if we try to run the guest cell, it will uh, look like that. That is uh, half one is the root cell and another half of this uh, cell. Is it will change? It can change according to the CPUs uh, available. That is CPU one, zero, one, two, two up to n CPUs, and according to that, it will allocate the its resources, right? Yeah, jailhouse integration with AGL. That's the uh, uh, that's the history I listed. Uh, whatever the things uh, added in the jailhouse and how it initiated. So it uh, it was first initiated in the GSOC twenty two. That is the previous version of the GSOC, and uh, the things which were uh, added was uh, added 
where meta AGL jailhouse layer into the meta AGL devil layer of the AGL and the support for higher memory variant for Raspberry Pi that is uh, support for the memory variant greater than 1 GB uh, for the Raspberry Pi versions and uh, some other uh, things which are added were uh, uh, jailhouse root cell configurations uh, uh, according to the AGL setup and in mid configuration files for the uh, ARM and x86 based uh, boards and architectures. And in GSOC 2021, uh, I worked on uh, adding the intercell communication via what I over IVSM for the uh, implemented by the jailhouse guys. And I ported all of these and added some extra patches on top of it to get it working. Okay. Okay. So, what is what IO? So what I basically is standard for network in this device uh, in which the guest device driver uh, knows that uh, it's running in a virtual environment. Uh, it's if you know about a uh, full virtualization and para virtualization, uh, you will get understanding that how full virtualization and para virtualization works. That is in para virtualization, there is a need uh, for uh, some code to uh, let it know that, yeah, it's working on some this particular environment and in full virtualization, it's totally native, right? Rather than have a variety of device emulation, yeah, is the main point that rather than have a variety of emulation mechanism for network block devices, we try to provide a common front end so that uh, code can be reusable, reusability can be maintained, right? Yeah. Okay, so next is what is iVision? So what I and iVision, right? So what is what I have block and iVision? What I all already discussed and let's uh, move to iVision. So iVision is a basically inter VM shared memory device, right? And designed to share between the multiple queuing processes running different guests and hosts. That is, let's say we have a, a common memory region which are shared between a different processes. So that particular shared region can be accessed by different guest cells uh, with the help of some transport or let's say with the help of some uh, middleman device which uh, here we can say as PCI device which can create some uh, mapping to that particular device and every guest cell can access to that particular region with the help of uh, some help from a middleman device right here I uh, there is a PC by bar there are different types of bar bar 0 bar 1 and here bar 2 map the shared memory object that is the uh, where whatever the shared memory object is present, it uh, uh, maps to that particular object so that uh, communication can be possible. Okay, the device, the device can use a shared memory object on host directly or it can obtain from one, from an IVSM server. So the device uh, which needs a shared memory, it can, it can uh, access from that, fr from the host directly or it can obtain from an IVSM server present in the, uh, uh, emulating device like such as uh, QMO, etc. Right. Next thing is yeah. So what I over iVision. So this is the part which we which I worked on. So basically, it's uh, it's, uh, it's totally implemented by the jailhouse guys, and uh, uh, it's currently experimental. But uh, it has some things which. Uh, we can uh, I have we have added to so that we can have a good uh, understanding of how it its uh, development will undergo in future. Uh, so that's why we pick this particular uh, uh, particular one for the communication part. So let me explain uh, one by one. So there are uh, three parts to it, right? The one is front end part. Then there is a transport part. Then there is a back end part, right? So what I wish I'm actually the trans uh, front end part, which uh, provides the tra transport through the back end part that is UI I wish I'm. and we can access the uh, back end service uh, with the help of what I I wish I'm block and console, right? So it's basically a user space application, uh, Linux application, you can say, uh, which can uh, which you can find in the uh, Q slash jailhouse Q slash jailhouse five dot fourteen in the git dot kizga dot org. Uh, or Jan Kisga's uh, kernel tree. And you can find those both applications. You can uh, just compile it and use it accordingly. So these are the uh, applications of that. And uh, for more details, uh, I know for time constraint, I have explained very little, but for more details, you can uh, refer to these below links, uh, which is Meta AGL Jailhouse uh, Markdown and Jailhouse Manual Config Markdown and 
Jailhouse manual config markdown is for custom usage and meta agile Jailhouse is uh, I have defined everything uh, from scratch so that uh, new user can pick up easily. This is the initial. This was the initial diagram. Uh, as you can understand that there is a root cell, then block backend, then shared device, and then shared memory region. Uh, whatever request we pass it through, then it will uh, goes through a queue and then block uh, backend. Then Jailhouse hypervisor. Then uh, yeah, it can revert back accordingly according to the uh, request made, right? And clear the queue and then again fill the queue. Okay, so RAM reservation part. So RAM reservation part based on the uh, thing that how your configuration file should, uh, how much RAM your configuration file should be allocated, right? So this memory, uh, this um, uh, layout, you can see that RAM for Linux, RAM, hypervisor code and data, RAM for non cells. These are all we have to pre mention so that it can um, easily. Uh, access those because as you know, Jira is a static party in the other version. We have to uh, mention things that this much amount of RAM is required, this much amount of this is required so that it can access easily from there, right? And for x86 systems, we have mem map and size dollar address. And for ARM systems, we have physical size minus uh, reservation part and extra devices. For, uh, we can add this in device trees. Uh, this is for, as you know, ARM and ARM system for boards only. And for grub two, we have to escape the dollar sign with the help of these uh, slashes, right? And this is the basically uh, summary of that. Whatever uh, I have discussed, that is escape the grub two with the help of. If you want to add this particular command line option in the grub two, then we have to escape this particular. Okay, so this is my uh, weekly timeline for uh, whatever I have did and whatever I have done in the GSOC period. And uh, from week zero, one, two, three, four, and five, uh, I have listed uh, whatever things I have done, uh, starting with the uh, build errors and a lot of build errors. Uh, my mentor, Jan Simon Miller, helped me a lot with those build errors and providing the, the machine uh, capable of doing all these builds. And, at starting, I was uh, started with uh, building Agile with Jailhouse, then progressed up to uh, testing the particular images and then testing the kernel for the with the Jailhouse in, in, enabling plus uh, IVSM, uh, which is now merged in the Q slash Jailhouse and uh, creating separate recipes for the kernel so that only that particular kernel should can fetch, uh, should be fetched. So these are all the things which I uh, did at the starting. And then again, uh, after uh, completing all these tasks, I moved to the uh, main part that is uh, integrated devices to the uh, root cell and non-root cell configuration so that uh, what I over IVSM communication can be established, right? So as you can see, uh, these are all my timelines uh, for the V0 to V5. Okay. So for week six to week 11, uh, I focused mostly on the uh, improving the accumulating, accumulation for the AGL target image. Right? So I improved the networking part and memory addressing part and uh, also starting working on the integration of the uh, devices uh, for in the root cell configuration and uh, the main uh, non-root cell configuration or get cells and uh, after resolving all these errors, uh, some things were working and I tested it uh, properly. And uh, after testing and everything, I uh, upstreamed all the code and yeah, it's not available on the uh, AGL's uh, repositories. Uh, you can check it out uh, and just test it out and uh, yeah. Okay, so these are the uh, patches if you want to uh, get some reference. Uh, I have also uh, included the documentation part for it so that uh, you can get easy uh, access to whatever I have done and uh, also uh, give me some suggestions on how I could uh, improve those so that uh, it can be usable, uh, more usable and uh, more efficient uh, in future. And I'm yeah I'm open to suggestions for that because yeah, um, and uh, these are some patches, and this one is the uh, 
patch for the updating the JLoss configuration. In this patch, uh, I have uh, done the uh, initial outlines like so required for integrating the actual uh, implementation part. That is, as you can already see that uh, uh, I have just updated the uh, previous uh, files, previous uh, configuration files, which were added in the previous. We saw just updated and corrected some things and, uh, and added more things to uh, be more uh, robust and uh, good, added some documentations for easy understanding of everything. So yeah, this patch was, that and next patch is you can see it uh, adds support for what I mean uh, what I over I wish I'm part that is uh, adding the PCI devices for the exposure of that particular shared region and then um, added documentations and uh, recipe files package groups for the uh, Linux applications for for accessing the backend part so everything was in this patch you can just uh, go and uh, see all these patches and yeah so just me some changes if uh, there is some mistakes and some things required to uh, make it more good with the current versions learnings this is the most important part i learned a lot uh, in the whole process i uh, learned a lot about the agl infrastructure uh, agl applications uh, i'm fascinated with the agl applications very much because uh, yeah it's very broad and uh, its development workflows, review process, uh, everything was very good. I learned so much about, uh, prof I, feel, I felt like professional, I felt like in the professional environment working with on the, some serious software development stuff. And due to this particular thing, I also increased, I uh, improved my research abilities and uh, also covered some different applications of the word IO, IVSM and, uh, but I in general and uh, ex uh, uh, got exposed to various hypervisors such as AK, ACI, IACON, and DPDK, etc., and uh, a lot more. Also, again, some knowledge about uh, virtualization build systems in general, that is uh, Yocto, uh, specific requirements for Delta Delta and Indian host. And uh, I was primarily working on the X86. So, uh, mostly uh, learned about those uh, things as well. So it was a great learning experience for me this time. Challenges, yeah, a lot of challenges. Uh, at first I was struggling with build errors, but Mr. Yang helped me to remove all those and focused on the main stuff. So very thank you to him. And I was also put to the Garrett workflow because before that uh, I was mostly in the uh, kernel and uh, GitHub's uh, development workflow, but uh, yeah, Garrett workflow was similar. So it was it was a uh, worth learning experience. And due to mentors, I was able to uh, make a balance between academics, GSOC, and a research project. And project mentored by uh, Mr. Professor Marcus Solidi, which was also related to Jailhouse. So I was able to manage between. Uh, uh, the project I was working at the Hypert Lab at Unimore and also uh, this particular GSOC project. So yeah, it was a very good learning experience. Feature work was uh, related to the Artos and one because uh, I was also mentioned that Artos would be should be there, but yeah, in next GSOC we'll able to catch that up as well. And next was uh, Jailhouse Q slash Jailhouse as I already explained that Q slash Jailhouse is the main branch, but yeah, they are now shifting to a most stable branch for the upcoming. So about GSOC, GSOC is basically open source program which helps uh, developers to get open up into the uh, community, open source community and uh, help establish the communication between the new developers and old developers so that they can be uh, stay long in particular organization. So GSOC create a program to bring all those developers, new developers into same area and uh, assign them projects and uh, make them work on them some projects along with the stipend so that they get some uh, motivation and as well as uh, some real world exposure to the software development and serious software development. So it was a very good program. Uh, if you are new to the development or already working in development, you should, you should definitely try, try uh, uh, mentoring it or just uh, you can uh, admit as a mentee as well. 
uh, for more uh, about gsoc and uh, you can already uh, read for more about gsoc you can uh, go to that particular link and due to time constraint uh, i cannot explain very much but uh, yes you can go to this particular link and you'll get everything uh, you know you have to know about um, you should know about the gsoc but i would say uh, gsoc was a very worthy experience for me and i would recommend to everyone um, yeah these are the some resources and references and yeah thank you very much thank you everyone for joining and this was my uh, first talk in this uh, huge uh, conference so if i have i have i've done any mistakes please bear with me bear with me and i hope this session is uh, some helpful to you as well and uh, i hope to um, produce some similar type of talks in future in this similar open source conferences. Thank you.